Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this one's going to be on recursive subdivision and instancing. This is actually one of my first effects I made a few years ago that I was the most proud of myself on figuring out. I was able to do this by doing a recursive subdivision and then instancing it based off of the face area to kind of use some math to drive the instances to make sure everything tessellates and kind of like fits in perfectly. So let's jump right into it. So of course, we're gonna go into geometry nodes, make a new geometry nodes group. And to do this, it's really quite simple. We're routing this mesh data. So I'm gonna click up here and move to wireframe mode. I'll push period on my keyboard to bring it in a bit easier. So we're seeing this wireframe, right? And what we wanna do is subdivide it. So we put a one here and now we're subdividing everything. So the magic of this is actually using a Boolean random value, and we're gonna use a Boolean right here to choose with this type of probability, like how much of this we want to actually subdivide. And we're gonna nest it all into a repeat zone. So let's just first do it once, then I'll put it into the repeat zone to show you how it's done. So we're gonna do a separate geometry, separate geometry here. And so what's nice is this brings you into selection where we can have this value right here. So by moving it to face, we're routing the face data in between a 50% probability of it being selected or not selected. So we have this selection here and here. Nice. And then from this, we're going to be doing another subdivision. So on the selection, we're going to subdivide it again, and we're going to join the geometry at the very end. So we're going to have this going back into here and this going into here. So here we go. This is basically the effect. As you can see, it's dividing it out. And then the magic of this is basically nesting this all into a repeat zone and doing it multiple times. This is one iteration as we can see. So let's put it into the repeat zone. So we're gonna do repeat right here. And then this is going to go out here. And then this can be brought in here. And then this also can be brought in right here. And then here we are, just like that. And so what's nice, about this is we can also use this iteration number into the seed value. So each time we're going to push the iterations, it's going to essentially, um, what's it called? Wait, is this double joined? This is double joined, so let's cut that out. So we wanna have this come in for the selection, this come in for the inversion, there we go. And then if we increase this iteration, we have it going, which is nice. And then it will just keep on dividing it out. Pretty cool, huh? What we can also do is pull out the, the probability but into the repeat zone as well. If we do this right here, and we can say like 0.5, and we can say like 0.6, and this will kind of change which value of probability is coming in for the beginning and the end. And so here we are. We have this kind of like nice way of kind of tessellating it out. It's a bit too much. Let's pull it down to three. So this is the main effect right here, right? I'll full screen it for you guys so you can see it a bit easier. So we're taking the values in, we're using a random probability with a random value. It's a Boolean, taking the faces, separating it, and then subdividing it again. Now we have this kind of cool subdivided mesh. The magic of it is using it as instances. So we're gonna take this value and also check the spreadsheet. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do a door named attribute. It's going to be a float. It's gonna be a face data. And we're gonna do face area. We're gonna put this here and we'll say store face, whatever. What's nice is we go into the a spreadsheet editor right here. We click here, we can see this. So now we're seeing a clean break of the face area. So if we remember how you know area is calculated, we have length times width. So this is one and one. This is obviously an area of one. But then for the subdivisions, it's being divided twice. So it's going to 0.5 to 0.5, so it's 0.25, right? So it's all making sense. So that's good. So what's nice is you can actually use this as a way to count the number of like iterations we've done. So if we do a math node and we do a power 0.5, which is the square root, we now are back to one and 0.5. And then if we go from here, to a, uh, I guess another math node, so shift D, and we go to logarithm, and we do, yeah, base of 0.5, it will go from zero, as in the zeroth iteration, so it's, it's like the prime, <laughs> one, two, three, whatever, right? So we're seeing that as we look at this. So if you increase this, we'll start seeing fours, 
So what's nice about that is this is a good way of essentially using this later for texture data. So we should probably say store face, let's say text. Cool. So we have that locked in. So now what we want to do is we're going to instance on all of these faces. So we're going to say mesh to points. And we want only the faces. Now we have this nice kind of distribution of points. And then we're going to do points or instances to points or instance on points, excuse me. And then let's just do a cylinder to make it easy. We're going to pull the cylinder in here. We're going to change the view. Let's pull this down to two. It's much easier to see. And then we can pull in face area as the size again for the scale. And it's way too small. So we're going to pull in the same power. Uh, uh, uh. So I guess this actually needs to be stored twice. So let's do uh, shift D here. And let's just pull this as that. And let's just say, or we can just do this capture attribute. Let's do that. X. There we are. Boom. My bad. Sorry, guys. So we have. So when we go to points, there's no longer any face area on the points. That's why it wasn't working. And so what we had to do was go back before it was still faces and, and capture that. This is going to be used for our, our, our shading texture, but this is uh, going to be used for the, the scaling to make it perfect. So when we square root it, then we can then also make it by 0.5. And that should actually tessellate perfectly. Uh, if you make it point like four nine, just a bit smaller, we're gonna have little gaps. So for this, we want to also rotate it on the normal. So rotate vector or align vector, right? Line rotation. There we are. And then same thing. Back before it's a mesh, we're gonna capture an attribute. Grab that in. Put that in here. And we're going to do face. And actually, this is wrong because it's going to be it's the wrong value being piped in. So we do capture attribute here. So you can see the socket messed up. So it's a float versus a vector. It needs to be blue. And then we're going to do face. Pull this in. And there we go. It's all so uh, like locked in. And we can do one more thing. Transform geometry. We're going to pull this up a little bit. I think it's going to be by 0.5. Maybe more. Maybe it's one. It's one. And there we are. So we're able to kind of make this little shape perfectly tessellate these uh, subdivisions and also instance those shapes, like instance whatever we want, like perfectly on it, which is nice. But now we're good to go. So we're going to say set material, lab material. Uh, and now we're going to go into the shading, shading selection, you know, store face text. So I'm going to copy this control C shading. We have this here. And we're going to do uh, attribute. There we are. It's I should be should be instancer because it's still in instances. And we check and we're getting this beautiful color data locked on to the exact value. Remember back into the, the spreadsheet, we can click back here. And we have it here. Store face text back to shading. And now what we can do is we can do a, a color ramp. Pipe this in and then pipe this in. I think we're going to have a nice view, but we also need to do a what's it called? Uh, map range. And this can come in and we know it's going from zero to three. And now it's going to go be distributed linearly across from zero to one again, which is nice. And we can change these colors to be whatever we want. Could do like red, and like a green, and we also do constant, which is nice. So you can just drag it up till we see it. Plus, add another color. And there you have it. All of the instances are basically changing the color essentially to the number of instance times. So if you go back to the geometry nodes, we want to increase the iteration to three. Let's say, go back to shading. Now it's going to be some zero to four. And then we can pull this back a little bit right there, there. And then we have this one here. And then this one can be like black or something. 
there you are. So we're able to make essentially this all work exactly how we want it to look. This is the basic effect. I hope you guys learned something. It's pretty quick. I think what's nice about it is you can see essentially the importance of storing a good uh, named attribute and then you can kind of clean it up in post, which is pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. Please leave a comment on anything. Uh, maybe say, give me your favorite platonic solid. Right now, for myself, I would say I'm, I'm big into tetrahedrons, and I think that was the platonic symbol of fire. Look forward to seeing the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Augury.